Good day to you. This is January 13, 2024. Uh, my name is Pastor Neil Wemus, and this is going to be the recording of our worship service for this week. Um, as you will aware, the weather is pretty nasty out there. Roads aren't good. Um, honestly, it was kind of sketchy even trying to get up here from my apartment. Um, I'm kind of right now actually hoping that I'm able to get my, apart my car back up to my apartment. Because uh, the driveway leading out of the apartment complex was pretty, pretty packed with snow. Um, but I'm going to record. We are. Rec I'm recording two different versions of this worship service for everyone. Um, and the reason for that is, is because I want to have both a contemporary style and a traditional style, as we would have had for this weekend's service. So, blessings to you. Keep safe. Keep warm. All that stuff. So, blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand and lift up. down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, you were clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all your sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing the washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We give thanks that according to your boundless mercy, you have beheld us and have blessed us with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in us, which has been inherited from Adam, has been drowned and died. Grant that we be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, we could be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And thanksgiving for the revelation of Jesus Christ and his wondrous epiphany in the Jordan, and for the revelation of God's name and blessing to us in holy baptism, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all the baptized children of God, that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all who proclaim Jesus Christ, that through their godly message, many would repent of their sins and join him in his heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For families, that the Lord would bless all parents, especially mothers, to joyfully acknowledge the gifts of spouse, children, and home. And for the elderly, the widowed, and the orphaned, that our Heavenly Father would show forth His grace to them, so that they, so they would not feel alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, that the Lord would grant humility and integrity to rulers, and bring forth justice according to His word and will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, depressed, tired, confused, and those in any need, that they would know God's comfort, and for all expectant mothers and their children, that they may have a safe delivery and be brought also to the life-giving waters of holy baptism, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who have received holy baptism, that they would treasure this heavenly gift, and so receive the body and blood of Christ for their salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for those who went before us, who passed the faith unto us, and who now rest in Christ from all their labors, that since we have died with Christ in baptism, we may be raised with him also. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need. The Old Testament reading for this day is taken from Joshua chapter 3, which writes, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Shedem. And they came to the Jordan, he and all the people of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, As soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And as for you, command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, 
When you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. And when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. So the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as soon as those bearing the ark had come as far as the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the brink of the water, now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away. At Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan, and those flowing down toward the sea of the Arabah, the salt sea, were completely cut off. And the people passed over opposite Jericho. Now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believes this, as the words and promises of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's hell, where your blood was spilled.
The text for the sermon this day is taken from 1 Corinthians, the, which was the epistle lesson, which you heard a little bit ago. But it's focused specifically on these words. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. This is the text. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no secret about it. Our world is not the way it should be. All you have to do is look in the news and you can see the horrible things that people say and do to one another. You look at the election, this, these caucuses that are coming up, and you see the way people talk of one another. The world is not quite the way it should be. We look at our own words, our own thoughts, the things we say to people. We lose our temper. We say words that we wish we shouldn't, we wish we hadn't. We're not always loving, we're not always generous, we're not always patient. Kindness is not always part of our be our life. All one has to do is look through the commandments and just look at how far we fall short. And yet the wisdom of man the wisdom of man says that we could undo it. We convince ourselves. That the wisdom of God, the wisdom of man convinces us that a good deed could cancel out a bad deed. We try to convince ourselves that we can make ourselves right. We try to convince ourselves that we can undo the bad that we do. Not realizing how foolish of an idea that really is. All one has to do is just imagine this. Think of a, a court case. Imagine a man standing before a judge guilty of murder. He talks to the judge and tells the judge, Hey, Your Honor, I've been, um, you know, I, I'm a nice guy. I do these good things around town and all this stuff. You know, can't you let me off? You know, I, you know, I obey the speed limit. I wear my seatbelt. You know, all that type of stuff. I pay my taxes, whatever. You know, can't you let me go on this? Of course he wouldn't. And that may be true, and those are, there's good things that you may do, but it does not undo the reality that someone is dead on account of you. A good deed does not cancel out a bad deed, no matter how much we try to convince ourselves. No, you're, you see, our God, he does not work through the wisdom of man, for the wisdom of man, frankly, is foolish. But he chooses... What seems to be foolish in man's eyes. To bring solution to the evil, to the broken world that we live in. Matthew chapter 1. The genealogy of Jesus Christ. Now I'm not going to read through all of this, but I do want to, I'm going to highlight here. How in this genealogy you see the foolishness of God at work. For example, here in verse 5, it says, Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab. Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. Prostitute. The most sin, one of the most sinful of professions that has ever existed in the world. And yet through this woman, we have the lineage of, to Jesus Christ. This woman who saved some spies in Jericho, you could read about it in the book of Joshua, also stands here in the lineage to Jesus. And not only that, she is the mother or the mother in law. Of Ruth. Ruth 
a story that you read about in her in the book called Ruth. And you read about her faithfulness to Naomi for who was her first mother-in-law because her first husband had died. She remained faithful to Naomi. At great risk to her own well-being. At great risk of personal extreme poverty. And yet, here she is included in the lineage of Jesus. Ruth, in fact, is the grandmother to David the king. When Samuel the prophet came to Jesse, looking, looking for a king, he looked for Jesse's sons. And one by one, the sons came before Samuel, and none of them, even though they were older, they were stronger. No. It was here in David, the unlikely one, that he found a king. But of course, David, though a good king at time, was definitely flawed. For you see, he would be an adulterer and a murderer. The man that he would murder is Uriah. And it was indeed Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, with whom he committed adultery. And yet by Bathsheba came the birth of Solomon, the king of great wisdom. See, all these seemingly foolish and unlikely of people, including in this geo genealogy that leads to the birth of Jesus, which means Yahweh saves, who is indeed the Christ. Born of Mary, in a little town of Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth, they said of the time? Indeed, something great, extraordinary came from Nazareth. Jesus, born of Mary, a woman not yet married. Born into a family of poverty instead of a king, a house of great wealth. Oh yes, God works through the foolish things, does he not? To be baptized by John. A man who ate locusts and wild honey. Yummy. Not so yummy, I guess. The foolish things that our God works through. And yet this locust and wild honey um, eater, Jesus said no greater man had been born of woman than him. But this Jesus that was born of Mary in born in Bethlehem of a family, grew up in the little itty-bitty-bitty bitty town of Nazareth, was indeed God in the flesh. He came to be baptized by John in order to be anointed to die, anointed to bear the sin of the world. Your sin, my sin, every sin that had ever been committed from the simplest, littlest, itty bittiest white lie to the most vile of sins. He took it upon himself, made himself guilty. He who knew no sin became sin for you, for me. And yes, in that Jordan River, at the ba baptized by John, he was being anointed for this purpose. To bring solution to sin, to death and the devil. And not by the means that we would expect, not by the riches, not by gold, not by treasures. No. But by one of these. A cross. An old rugged piece of wood to which he would nailed. He who is God in the flesh died. God doesn't die. That's what human logic says. God would never die, but indeed he did. God died for you, for me. And through this foolish thing, he who knew no sin became sin for you in this foolish moment, in this foolish time, that you might ha receive the righteousness of God, that you may receive life and forgiveness and salvation. Yes, in the Jordan River, he was baptized, anointed for this purpose. But now he brings water to you. Water. 
Sometimes the water's lovely, sometimes it's dirty, sometimes it's filthy, sometimes it could be the saliva from a man because that's all you have. But whatever the water may be, whatever the quality, but because it's combined with God's word, this water which we call, this water word in the promise of Christ, which we call baptism, a foolish thing it seems. He saves you. He saves you through this water and this word. He clothes you with his, his, his very self. He unites him to, him to himself in his death and in his resurrection. Foolish things he gives of bread. Again, sometimes the bread is nice, sometimes it's just a little disc. And yet in it, he gives you his very body. The wine, sometimes it's delicious wine, sometimes it's a little bit bitter. And everything in between, no matter the quality, that wine is his blood, which he gives to you for the forgiveness of sins, because you see, in the strengthening of your faith, oh yes, indeed, he works through foolish things. Foolish things to bring you life and salvation. And he even worked through foolish people, like your pastor, like me, to deliver you this word, to tell you that your sins are forgiven in absolution. And indeed, your sins are forgiven. Because as he says, whatever sins you forgive are forgiven. Even the foolish ones such as I, or whoever the pastor may be. Through foolish things, foolish ones such as you. You too, he can do great things. Delivering the good news of Jesus Christ to others. That they may hear and believe this foolish message. Because as foolish as this message is, it is so much greater than any of the foolishness of this world. Or the greater than the wisest wisdom of this world. Because in this foolish message, in this foolish truth, is the salvation of the world. This foolish truth of this salvation leads to eternal life. Leads to the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. Yes, it's foolish. But our God, he uses the foolish things to do extraordinary things. So may we take comfort. Take joy in these foolish things. For our God makes that what is foolish. He takes it and makes it glorious. So he did with those people of old in the Old Testament. So he did with his apostles. So he does with that simple water that simple bread and that simple wine. And so he does with you. So in the foolish cross of Jesus Christ, may we glory, take comfort, and may we declare it until he returns. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace, peace, and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you the one true faith to life everlasting. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, through holy baptism you called us to be your own possession. Grant that our lives may evidence the working of your Holy Spirit in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control according to the image of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before. Treasure.
i